so welcome welcome everyone for those of you that don't know me my name is cindy i am at simply cindy i am a psychic medium i have lots of tools in my basket uh i don't know if these ladies are going to come, excuse me come in so if they watch later yeah i just want to give a shout out uh always to those of you that buy me coffee and I wanted to show you that I have some coffee. <laughs> I'm barely putting the name up because because uh, I'm not sponsored by them. Um, but yeah, I got some coffee. Um, so I wanted to thank Baby Angel. I really appreciate it. This helps me keep my channel going. Um, and I also wanted to say thank you to Dot uh, for buying me coffee and cake it is this is the thing it's so funny i didn't even think about the fact that oregon and washington are like mega coffee like you get such good coffee anywhere um in oregon or washington right um wasn't even thinking about that when i was moving here or when i was even thinking about moving here that wasn't even on my radar but you guys know i love coffee and so this just further solidifies that I should be here. <laughs> Coffee is my life. <laughs> uh, I came to Earth to experience some pleasures. And coffee is one of them. And I will not stop drinking it. Period. The end. Shoot. I wanted to show you guys something. Uh, maybe I can show you. Can you guys. When I show you guys my phone. Can you really see it? I don't know. I'm going to have to show you on the next one. I think I'm going to come on tomorrow or today later in the afternoon uh, and do another live. Because I wanted to show you guys just how much our energy changes the world. Like just how much power we have. And I'm not just talking about our group. I'm talking about multiple groups that had this, that you, were getting the same message, right? And doing this like we have our own way of doing things but it's like the same message and i wanted to show you guys i'll do it tomorrow but I, i'll tell you tonight um the who the who never someone in australia last night was talking about us americans drink big soup uh bowls full of it yeah we do <laughs> we do um but i wanted to tell you guys that the who uh, came out and said, I probably shouldn't quote, I'm not going to quote them. Um, I, I read something today that said that the, um, the impox is no longer a concern, right? Um, so basically the BS that they tried did not work. I told y'all, I wanted y'all to take that stance. Like, we're not doing this again. It ain't going to happen. Absolutely not. No way, right? And so it looks like it's changed. It looks like it's changing. Isn't that great? So I don't know what kind of BS they were trying to pull. Um, and let me be very clear. When these things come out, uh, I was in the medical field, you guys know, in the past. So I take them to heart. Like, I do take them to heart. And I'm like, my thinking was, I'd rather be prepared. I'm always of the opinion I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Right? So... But just the fact that I think not just our group, but a lot of people around the world just said, no, we're not doing that. And they changed and it changed because now isn't that nice of them to all of a sudden come out and say that, oh, there's not really that much of a concern. <laughs> where my and this is where my Saggy Park, my Saggy Moon comes in and says, yeah, that's what I thought. Yes, isn't that awesome? I just want you women to know, um, I know that you guys, we talked about this the other night, you guys have been through hell. You went to hell, you danced with the devil, you ran that mf -er out, and you said, this bitch is mine now, right? Um, you took over it. And then you've come out of it, right? And so I just want you to know, even though they... I guess when you, we, you've been through all of that and then you come out, you know you're stronger, right? You know you're stronger, but I don't think you realize just how powerful you are. Um, I don't think a lot of people on this earth realize how powerful they are. 
I think the ones that realize how powerful they are don't have their ego in place, right? And so it's a shame, but we're changing that. So I want you to take count. We did this with the thing in Ukraine too when it first started. When we get together, it's we can change a lot of stuff by just having a stance, by just having the opinion, by just gathering together. This is what they are afraid of. They are afraid of groups coming together and a conscious mind coming together and changing it. Um, that's why they have worked so hard to keep us busy and thinking we're in lack and thinking we don't matter and thinking all kinds of stuff. And um, this also goes back to us, Pluto, moving back into Capricorn. We're seeing the difference. Remember I said uh, he's going to come finish up. Pluto's finishing up in Capricorn, and he we're seeing the difference. We're going to begin to see the difference of all those structures changing, right? And then there are going to be some that fall. But for, like, you and your natal chart, if you've done a lot of work, which you have and for the last 16 years, it's time for you to reap the benefits. It's time for Pluto to give you your gifts. It's time for um, Capricorn to give you your gifts, right? So, uh, let's see. I wanted to talk about, we're going to talk about the eclipse tonight. So, I hope that you guys are happy about that uh, before I move on to the next thing. Uh, we're going to talk about the eclipse tonight, but I did want to explain how having a planet there, having um, the nodes there can really change things. So I'm going to go into a little bit of that of how, like, I'm going to, sh I'm going to tell you where my stuff is at. On the 17th, if you can see, first, we have this, uh, actually, let me, let me go before that. We have retrograde, Uranus turned retrograde on the 1st of September, okay? And Uranus right now and on the 17th will be training um, Saturn. Sorry, I was like making sure, but yeah. So Uranus will, I'm sorry, sextiling. Um, he'll be trining. Yep, it's right on top of my Chiron. Yeah, it's on my north node. So um, I'll tell you in a minute, just to, he, he is trining, sorry, he's trining Pluto. I keep thinking of Saturn because I'm about to talk about Saturn too. Um, he's trining Pluto. Okay, so we all know, and if you've been watching my Pluto series, hopefully you've seen some of the Pluto series. Um, let's, let's talk about Uranus real quick and what that means and what Uranus is about a little bit. So Uranus, um, we all know is the planet uh uranus likes to liberate uranus likes you uranus is there to help you find your freedom there to help you feel free there to help you um so he's a planet of revolution right he's a planet of epiphanies because he's he's very wise i mean i know jupiter is the wisdom but he's very wise as well um and he's also about authenticity right and so we know that we've been moving into the authenticity um he's about forward thinking and he's about moving into the unknown and we also uh attribute electricity to him so he's very electrifying he's got a lot of energy right um and so to understand when he goes retrograde, like when he's moving forward, he's moving forward. Hey, pineapples in LA, how are you? Good morning. So moving forward, he is like um, helping us do those things, helping us feel free, giving us some wisdom, giving us some energy, uh, having epiphanies with the wisdom. Like, oh, uh, Uranus is like, he helps you. And if you think about Aquarius, which is ruled by Uranus, we can detach, right, our emotions. And so Uranus kind of does that, where he can, like, help you get a different perspective, maybe step back a little bit and see the whole of the situation and maybe 
come at it from a different direction or see a different way right that's uranus now when he is retrograde right which he's going red he went retrograde on the first and he'll be retrograde until january 30th 2025 so we got four months that he is like what he's asking us is because remember when it's retrograde it's about the reads readjusting reassessing rethinking pivoting right and so when he's retrograde he's when he turns inward to us he's asking us those questions do you feel free do you have your freedom right those are one of the questions that's one of the questions that he asks he's like are you standing in your authenticity have you figured out what that is um and and he doesn't just ask those questions he's showing you he gives you these epiphanies he gives you this wisdom he gives you the energy and the drive and the desire to want to even do that right and so some things the reason i'm saying this is because uh while he's going direct and changing stuff in our outer realm um you know we were asking questions or we were dreaming or we were wanting like we have these dreams right and we're like i want it i'm working towards it but i still don't see it right and of course we have the saturn pisces thing going on now bear with me it's all going to come together right but when he goes retrograde the great thing is is that he's giving you the insight that you that we have been working on as he moved forward now that he's coming back it's almost like he's like come here and let me walk you through this you you do have this you are capable of um you don't need to work against me it's not fear that you need to sit in does all that make sense to you guys and so as he does this this is going to be four months of this he's going as he does this he is also on this day this is why this day is important the 17th um so he just went retrograde but the 17th when we have that partial lunar eclipse he's going to help you him and saturn him and pluto right so him and pluto i keep saying saturn i'm so sorry him and pluto are like do do you understand because pluto's pluto is like past lives future lives right the baggage the psychological that we um that we have the trauma that we have as you as uranus is moving forward things were changing he was changing things for us and we may have felt uncomfortable or we're like yes that's i'm moving towards my dream but i still don't feel like like I'm, I'm not seeing it all the way. I don't feel like I know I'm going somewhere, but I don't know where. And I'm kind of afraid of that. And um, it could be because of the Pluto, the psychological trauma that you've had. This is the way my parents always did it. This is the way my family's always done it. This is the way I kind of remember doing it. This is the habits that I have. But now my life has shifted and I'm going with the flow, but I'm still like not directed, right? This is that time when he goes retrograde where he's like, okay, let me sh walk you through this. You do have it within you. Do you realize that you actually see the separation of you and the trauma? Do you see that you are a different person than your lineage? Do you see that you are not defined by your abandonment you're not defined by the cruelty that was done to you you're not defined by that like that doesn't make all of you that made you part of who you are but you are realizing and growing into what you've always wanted to be does that make sense to you guys does all that make sense to you guys because that's what him and pluto on this day he's going to like it's not just this day it's these next four months but really on this day do you realize you are not that person anymore that person will always be a part of you but you are not there anymore you are here and you are moving in a different direction right and that's also what pluto is saying 
do you understand that you don't have to be held back by your mind you don't have to be held back by these traumas you don't have to uh you no longer have to move in the space of i don't really deserve that i could have done better um you know people always abandon me or whatever the thing is right i always find the wrong group or whatever that is right whatever you've been working through that's kind of what this what's going on with the pluto and uranus thing right and they're in trine so when they're in trine i'm feeling like you're going to get like this almost like this awareness right this beautiful awareness because of the things that have happened outside outside over the last four well from january actually from january 2024 you'll see wow i'm in such a different place and i i can see where i've moved forward i no longer have to i'm no longer carrying this baggage anymore right like i, I and we have the nodes here, okay? So the nodes are part of this conversation. Uranus and Pluto are part of the conversation. And then uh, the actual partial eclipse is part of the conversation. And remember what I had said in the September video, the partial eclipse, the reason it's partial is because this, south, this north node and this south node are just going to be aspecting, okay? So they're at 25 degrees and the nodes are going to be at six degrees, right? In the next sign. But because they're still aspecting, they're still talking together. It's almost like the moon is pushing you. It's going, you're going to, it's going to give you a glimpse of where you're going. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Cause I'm, I'm trying to say all of it at once. I'm sorry. So it's going to give you a glimpse because right now our nodal accesses or our eclipses have been in Aries. Remember the last solar eclipse? It was in Aries, um, Aries and Libra, right? And, and they're still in Aries and Libra and that's what we've been manifesting. That's what we were going through that portal and manifesting. And then it's almost like this last part of letting go as the moon is going through this north node it will be going through this north node it's at it's already talking to the north node this sun is already talking to the south node right and so for the next six months before and after so you guys know you're already feeling it's like the time is right now where you're already feeling it you're already seeing i'm in a different place my life has changed a lot um even in the last six months, my life has changed. Like you can look at me, I was in California. Now I'm here, like my life has changed. You know, I was far away from my babies. Now I'm close to my babies. You know, I wasn't, hey, I wasn't um, able to be on YouTube as much as I wanted and get to gather with you guys as much, as, but I, I am now, like my life has changed, right? And so you probably are seeing this, but in the next six months, we're going to have because the last time um pisces hey how are you feeling lorna so the last time that the eclipses were in pisces and virgo was in uh march of 2016 and february 2017 right and so because this is a partial lunar right it's like look back to 2016 in 2017 and look how far you, you've come look where you're at and and there is something in there that has to do with pluto that has to do with uranus so it's going to give you wisdom right um that has to do with pluto that has to do with saturn and the reason i say it has to do with saturn and neptune is because that moon is right between saturn and neptune and pisces okay now pisces and virgo axis that would mean it when this north node comes to pisces and this south node comes to virgo right because the nodes go backwards every all the planets go this way and the nodes go backwards right 
So you're going to look at what happened in 2016, 2017. Look and see what, where are you at? Where are you at now? And what did, what have you let go of? How do you see that your life is so different? Um, and it has a lot to do with your health too, right? And so that's where with the reason I'm saying this is because Pisces and Virgo have to do with your health. Pisces and Virgo um, have to do with different parts of your health, right? So like Pisces is more the immune system. Uh, Pisces is more... Um, so it's the immune system, it's the blood, and it's the lymph nodes, right? That's what it represents, right? And then Virgo represents like your digestive system and detoxifying and purifying, right? And so when these nodes were there last time, right? If you had, when the south node was here and the north node was here, what were you getting through understanding um, about those two things, right? Your health. And so, thank you. Oh, I'm so glad you're feeling better, sister. Um, like for me, so I'm going to, to bring it down, I'm going to give it to you guys. So my North Node, I was born with a North Node at 27 degrees Pisces. It's in my first house because I have an intercepted first house. So Pisces is intercepted in my first house and Virgo is intercepted in my seventh house, right? That means that Virgo is in my seventh house, but it doesn't rule it. That means Pisces is in my first house and doesn't rule it, right? Aquarius rules my first house. And Virgo rules my, I mean, Leo rules my seventh house. I've said that to you guys before. So my think of it. It's, look where Neptune is on the 17th. It's retrograde at 28 degrees. My north node is right there. So my north node, which is our mission, not our passion, it can be, your North Node can be your passion, but it's mainly your mission, right? Your South Node is the thing that you've already mastered. It's the place that you feel most comfortable in, right? And so, with my North Node being there, and these this North Node that's transiting now, talking to my North Node, talking to Neptune, talking to the Moon, talking to Saturn, like, and you can see what I'm doing. You can see that I'm taking responsibility. That I'm like even tonight coming on late at night, even though that I it was you know I had a heat wave today. I'm working with my body. I did not go out in the sun. I am not being overheated. I'm making sure to rest. I'm I'm eating and my diet is correct. Like all of that, right? Detoxify. But the that's the north node. My south node is the detoxifying, right? Uh, purifying, right? Uh, my digestive system, right? And I've never had an issue with my digestive system, uh, but the purifying, the detoxifying, um, did I get rid, did I get all of the toxic people because it's my seventh house, relationships, right? Uh, partnerships, did I detoxify my life, right? Am I moving towards my mission does that all that make sense to you guys how how one little thing could like have a different conversation for everybody which is why you want to go see an astrologer sometimes right um because you can put that picture together i'm giving you my thing so that you guys can kind of get it right but you can see that this is faded it was faded i was forced to move here even though it was part of my dream to move here in Oregon, but I was forced to, and I jumped and I took the leap, right? That's all those planets talking. And doing that has put me back on my path, which I never was off. It's just the way that you guys like understand it, right? I'm doing what I'm supposed to. I'm taking the responsibility like Saturn wants me to. I am working hard at something that I love that gives me energy. Does all that make sense to you guys? That's my north node being activated with this north node coming up. So what I'm having is I'm having a nodal return, right? So you have a nodal return. Everybody has a nodal return. 
in eight, every 18 years, right? And when it's the opposite, so when it's the opposite, if the north node is opposite, that's every, sorry, I said 18 months. I meant 18 years. 18 years. Every 18 years, you'll have a nodal return. And every nine years, you have the opposition. So the opposite of, of it's not a return. It's the opposite, right? So every nine years, your nodal, your, your, the opposite side will be activated. Every 18 years, you're starting a new cycle. Does that make sense? Yes. North node is in Aries and South Node is in Libra, but this is where I'm talking about the conversation. Hey, how are you? This is where I'm talking about the conversation. This nodal axis, even though it's in Aries, is coming towards Pisces and it is going to be, so my exact nodal return will be February 14, 2025. That's the exact time that the node the north node will be at 27 degrees, which is where I was born, with a north node at 27 degrees. But from now until February, my, that north node is activating my natal north node, which is, which if you were to look at my natal chart, it, the, my north node sits right here at 27 degrees. Does that make sense to everybody? I know that's a little bit advanced. And I know it's late, but I wanted to show you how these things are faded, what you will kind of be looking for in the next from it's already started. Like I've already I I'm already having all these changes and I'm already having these epiphanies. So I know you guys are right. Does all that make sense to you guys? Your north node is in Aries and your south node is in Libra. So you just had your nodal return. I think we talked about that before, too. You're having your nodal return. It's not done yet, right? Okay, perfect. Good. So, but if you don't have nodal return, if you're not having your nodal return there, right? Let's just say you you don't have your north node in Pisces, right? It's still going to be talking because this transit north node is going to be in Pisces. And for that reason, it's talking to this partial lunar eclipse, which is going to be a little bit stronger than a normal partial lunar eclipse. You can tell by the fact that it's going to be a super moon, and which means the moon is closer, right, to Earth, which means uh, the energy frequency is different and stronger for us, right? So, but the other thing too is that it's faded, but you're going to feel it, a lot of you, all of you. Uh, because Neptune is there, the moon is there, uh, Saturn is there, right? And all of these, especially, um, this is the conversation that these are having with the nodes. But then Uranus is having this conversation with Pluto and the sun, which means it's connected to this partial eclipse, right? So it's connected. If it wasn't connected, it would be like, oh, that's happening in my life and this is happening in my life. But they're two different things. These are all connected. Does that make sense to you guys? See that trying? It's connected, which is what I talked about in my September video. We have that grand trine in the earth signs, which means you are getting gifts. You're getting something tangible, physical, whatever it is that you've been working through, whatever it is that you've been working with Pluto, whatever it is that you've been working with Uranus, how your life changed, what you understand, what trauma you've let go. This is the opportunity that, and it's like a glimpse. It's almost like they're saying, okay, when you get here, they're really going to be changed. They're going to realize um, that they've let go. They're going to realize that they have a, that they're not carrying that baggage anymore, that they're not feeling the way that they used to feel. They're seeing, because I've shown them, right, Saturn and Uranus, I've shown them how things can change. I brought people in front of them where they're having new 
conversations with people, new understanding, new relationships. I've brought jobs to them. I've brought moves to them. I've brought like that. That's your honest saying all that, right? Just drop it in to say hi. Oh, just drop it in to say thank you um, for sharing. You are appreciated by us. Oh, Lori, thank you so much. I work 2 a.m. Uh, to 6 p.m. depending. Oh, well, I'm glad that you can drop in. Thanks for thanks for coming in. I know it's really late, but I just wanted to uh, um, like help you understand. You guys are so aware and you're such wise souls and all the stuff that I'm telling you it's not about like learning something that y'all are just gonna know you're just gonna remember right and so I just want to the way that I work and I know this group works is it makes it better when we kind of know where we're headed right we have no problem letting like we're not the we're not the group and we're not the people we're not the souls that want to hold on for so long what we're the group that's like why am i holding off for so long because i know not to hold on for so long if you can tell me why and it makes sense then i'll release it that's kind of our group right my north node is in leo right okay so your north node has already so if you have the north if you do not have a north node in virgo or uh, Pisces, then you're not going to have nodal return, but you still are going to have the North Node go into Pisces and the South Node go into Virgo. Does that make sense? And it's almost like the, the Neptune and the Moon will activate the part of what they're about in Pisces. And that's why I was saying that has to do with your lymph your lymph system, your blood, your immune system, right? And so we may see that. I know I'm seeing a lot of people with these issues, and that's why, because you're about to break through. You're about to break through. You have worked on this long enough. I said this the other day, your souls are so ready, but it's, it's not connecting, right? Because we haven't had these eclipses yet it's not connecting and in balance and at peace with your body it's like your body hasn't had time it, your soul has and even your psyche has and even your hearts have but your body has not had time to heal and adjust does that make sense to everybody i hope i'm explaining this correctly like it's almost like it's almost like a warrior after his battle and after the war, but he still needs to, he's like fine. He's in good spirits. He won the war. He's fine. He's good, but his body's not right. That's where we're at. It's like we have done so much work and we have so much understanding, um, but our bodies have suffered because it's like we drug our bodies through this. Does that make sense to you guys? And I'm trying to like, this is the space it, over these next six months where we need to like um, align our body with our soul. Does that make sense? Like a lot, like you have to come to some peace and some of you need to take care of this. Like some of you have just I'm the warrior. I'm going to keep going. Even though my leg is broken, I'm just going to keep doing it. And you haven't allowed yourself, right? And like I said, I'm working with a lot of people right now that are having, they're so wise. Y'all are so wise. And you understand it's just your body hasn't had a chance, right? And before we put more bad habits into the body, this is what this is about. I've struggled with illness for two years. That's because I'm not aligning my body. Yes. Yes. My mind and my body and my soul. That's that's right. When when there is no I learned this a long time ago from spirit from my higher self. When there is no contradiction, there is no disease. Right? Does that make sense? When there is no contradiction, there is no disease. So, even though we call it disease, even though we call it an illness, even though we call it 
whatever we call it in the medical field, right? Whatever they call it in the medical field, and then we just kind of take it on, right? Um, whatever you want to call it, I call it a misalignment. You're not aligned. That's all. You're not broken. It's not like you can't heal yourself. Like, if y'all don't understand <laughs> by now of the letter that were written and the the laws that were changed in the 1970s and the 1960s and the 1950s that changed our whole healthcare system. They have you guys believing that you cannot do without them. And that is total BS. It's total BS. And I know for a fact, because I've done it myself, being in both system, being in the system and being out of the system. Does that make sense? I've had something going on that is pretty serious and I have no idea what it is. It's horrible and has it has affected me for longer than three years. I'm telling you, like that's a big message that I'm getting is that um and they're they're I've always said Western medicine has its place for emergencies. If your leg's cut off, if you've got a gunshot wound, if you have blah, 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 blah. It, like, it's there to help put a Band-Aid on. So it's good. It, it, Western medicine is good. It's got its place, right? Western medicine is not here to cure you. Never once have they said they're going to cure you. I've never heard anybody say we can cure you. you that's not what their protocol is. <laughs> that is not what they're meant to do. They're meant... To put a band-aid on it and then with big pharma coming in put you on the medications that are just going to keep you going does that make sense so i'm bringing this all up because pisces and virgo are going to be activated not because the nodes are there right now but because the nodes are talking to them and the moon and the sun and mercury and neptune and saturn and then there's pluto and then there's uranus and then there's the sun again which connects them right and then we have jupiter with uh venus like it's all connected and i want you to understand that this is not the type of letting go or eclipse partial eclipse it's like <gasps> this is the all the hard work and it's also a glimpse because the nodes are going into pisces and going into virgo so it's a glimpse of where we're going right does that make sense is that, do you understand that it's an eclipse to help us move into this north node which is our mission right and for some the mission is the passion right like for me my mission is my passion does that make sense but your mission doesn't always have to be your passion so don't get that confused sometimes people will have the mission and be like yeah but i'd like to do this better but you keep getting thrown that way it's because these eclipses are faded they're going to make you get on that path that you wanted to experience why you were here this time does that make sense to everybody so you can kind of get a glimpse of what's going on because of uh if you look back in 2016 2017 what's changed what have you grown from uh what understanding do you have now even your body so for some of you the body issues could have started then right um and like for me I'm finally in my south node letting go of certain things, right? Uh, the the habits, because I've talked, you guys have seen me. I, I'm just sitting here thinking about it. I told you I have to balance being uh, over-organized, working way too much, uh, not paying attention to my body, right? And y'all know I have to pay attention to my body that now that I've done this for so many years, pay attention to my body and gave myself that time to heal and used all these other herbs and different uh, alternative 
uh, modalities and uh, treatments, right? I'm no longer in that space where my body is suffering and I detoxified and purified my seventh house, my relationships, my um, partnerships, right? Not only in my personal relationships did I get rid of people, but in my partnerships and business, like my partnerships with YouTube, right? With um, the collaborations, with the managers, with the, all of that, like all of that is, is I, I worked very hard to detoxify, to purify to work on my blood if so to speak like the seventh house has the blood the purifying right um to work on digesting the people that i want in my life the people that i'm attracting and that had to do with pluto transiting my left my uh, 11th house does all that make sense but i just want you guys to to kind of get that understand that understand that the, that this is like a even though it's a partial eclipse, I feel like it's a, a partial lunar eclipse, which means letting go. I, I feel like it's like you're finally letting go of the phase. For some of you, it was mourning, losing people. I mean, I've lost people, right? And a lot of you have lost people. Like I've been doing a lot of mediumship lately um, and you've lost people. And I think you're getting to the place where you like, like I'll be very personal with you. I, 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 when I lost my husband, I'm like, I, I don't see a world without him. I don't understand, right? Like I don't, I don't see a, I don't see where I can go without him, right? But I now we're in that place where I'm like, I have gone without him, and we're we are okay. Do we miss him? Yeah, of course we miss him. We'll always miss him. Is he close to me? Of course. Um but i can actually see and it no longer that like i told you guys the other night that pain is never going to go away but it's like chiron I'm, i've learned to work with it does that make sense I, so i hope you guys are understanding that i hope you see where all the conversation because the only reason i'm being personal is so that you can see the conversation going on here right my pluto was activated it's it was transiting my 11th house it's now in my 12th house uh even in capricorn it's in my 12th house because the way my 12th house is it's got capricorn and a little bit of aquarius right so for me it had transited my 11th house where i needed to because it was part of my work right it was part of my work so i needed to do things the way that my path was the way that i wanted to do it not i wanted to attract the right people which is you guys i am so and that's what i'm seeing I'm like, this is such a great group. This is such, these are such beautiful souls. These like strong warrior. I don't even know how to explain how old you guys are and how powerful you guys are, you know? And I am so lucky that you come on in the middle of the freaking night or day or whenever, even if it's just to stop by and say, here I am. I want to be part or I'm part of this. I love you guys. I'll see you later. I got to go. Right. But it it's like that doesn't happen. <laughs> I We have such and it's not my group. It's our group together. Like we all have these talents. We all have these abilities and we're better together. Divided. We're not. And I'm at, and I'm so lucky that it is us the ones who have always had to be independent and alone to finally it's almost like well we get a group too we've been together and alone and we've done it on our own but we get a group too isn't that awesome like i i'm just so honored to be a part of this so i thank you guys but that that was my 11th house like i'm attracting the right people so i know that i i did it so i know that i did it I, I really worked in that 11th house. I had a lot of losses. Y'all know that. You've seen you've seen my journey. You, you see that I have a lot of losses. And if if for nothing else, to let you know that you will come through this too. And I think a lot of you are almost there. Or you're just like, um, back from hell. Now what do I do? Now's the time to put the body into place. You finished the war. It's time to put the body back into alignment. Does that make sense? 
And I think that's what a lot of this has to do with, with this partial eclipse. And again, it's going to be giving us a glimpse as to what's coming because it's the North Node, right? That makes sense. The North Node is transiting my 11th house. So the North Node, um, Uranus, Saturn, Pluto, um, those bigger planets, when they transit, um, do life changing. They're, they they can change your life, right? Um, but because there's Pluto's really slow, so there's like a whole bunch of change over a long period of time that you'll do. Like 2008 to like 2024, it, we're not the same. That's a long transit that we just had. And we're not even finished, right? Uh, but that's a long transit. We're not the same. The same thing as we go into Aquarius when it goes back in in November. Pluto, I'm talking about Pluto. It's going to be the 20 years, the 19 and some years, right? So it's not going to look like it does today. It's not going to look at all like it does today. Does that make sense? So um, depend. I want you to look at the axis. The axis. The axis. <laughs> sounds like I'm saying axis because I'm so tired because it's so late. Um, axis. A X I S. I want you to look at the axis in your natal chart of where Virgo is and where Pisces is. That's where you're going to have some epiphanies. That's where you've had some life changes. That's where you're going to have some more life changes, but they're good. And that's where you're going to get relief. That's where things are going to come through over the next six months. Does that make sense to everybody? Um, the other thing I want to tell you guys is um, Mars on, because I'm going to go back to this. So does there anybody have any questions about that? You've got, you've got this trine here. You've got this grand trine here. You've got stuff coming. Letting go and understanding. And maybe it's a little part of, you know what? Why am I holding on to this? Or, I, I've been wanting to let this go, but how can I do that? Remember what I just said about this group? Just tell us, help us like see a different perspective and we'll let go, right? We just need to understand it. Well, here comes... Uranus and Pluto to help with Neptune and the moon and Saturn and the sun. And who's the processor? Mercury. Mercury's right there. Mercury's right here. He's going to be like, I'm helping too. All right. Where Venus and Jupiter get to do what they love to do. Bring you gifts. <laughs> they love bringing you gifts. So as all of this is happening, you can see the conversation. As all of this is happening, they're like, yeah, I get to give them that. Yeah, she's been wanting that and I get to do that, right? Um, here's the other thing. Where is it? Let me see if I can find it again. Now, remember for you guys, uh, depending on where you are in the world, um, the partial lunar eclipse is either going to be on the 17th or on the 18th, okay? So a quintile is like... Um, it's like where you have like this talent that's innate, right? It's where your inspiration, your, your creativity comes. And I thought it was happening on the 17th, but I could be wrong. It could be like, yeah, I have to find it. Um, because what I was getting before was as you're releasing and Uranus is helping you with the wisdom. It's like she's helping you understand that you have this hidden talent. That you've always had this creativity. That you always have this way about you. You don't realize that it's such a talent. Because it's innate. It's who you are. Right? And so. But. It's almost like you don't realize what a talent or creativity that it is that you can give to the world or that you can give to yourself as you do this thing. But when you release this psychological trauma or 
this way of being that you've noticed that you're not anymore or this closure that you're going to have when that is gone it's almost like this emerges but i'm going to have to find it again i think i'm going to have to get on um, this afternoon or this evening um because that is one thing that i wanted to talk about um and i'm just going to kind of do a free fall i want i really want to um i really want to read some charts and kind of let everybody see so does anybody have any questions about that? I'm so sorry. I can't find it. I, don't, I can't believe I can't find it. Usually I write a date. Um, but the next thing that I wanted to talk about. So today or yesterday on the 5th, uh, Mars went into Cancer. Okay. So not only are you going to be getting the Uranus energy electrifying, understanding the wisdom, the uh, how my life has changed and how I kind of have incorporated it and how I can see different and how, and you're going to have an epiphany. I'm telling you, you're probably going to have an epiphany <laughs> with Uranus. He's going to like help you see in these next four months how close you are or how you pivoted to your dream. Does that make sense? But to, yesterday it started where Mars has gone into um, Cancer which is, I know a lot of people say, well, Mars doesn't like being in Cancer. Um, but I think that Mars is going to bring a lot of energy into Cancer. And I think it's going to be like focused energy because Cancer is like emotion and they're cardinal. So they can start things, right? And so because Cancer is a cardinal, I feel like as Mars moves through Cancer, you're getting inspired because you also have Uranus and you have Jupiter like talking, right? And so I feel like wherever cancer falls in your house, whatever house cancer falls in for your chart, you're going to be getting not only uh, the inspiration or the, oh yeah, that's the way I should do it, right? You're, you're going to get that, but you're also going to get the energy where you're like, oh, I want to do this. Or, I, you know, I've been wanting to do this for a while. I've got so much energy now, like in that area. So take note of that. Because I don't see Mars. I see, it's so funny because I think as Mars, like I'm, I've been feeling Mars's journey for some reason. But I feel like he's learning how to focus <laughs> being in a water sign. Does that make sense? And then Cancer being the start of things the cardinal the uh, season to start right uh i feel like you're just gonna get something comes through there where it's like focused but it's you doing it without like being in a good mood about it or being inspired to do it or doing it happily and that gets you closer to that dream too if that makes any sense right that makes sense to you guys to say partial is like it's gonna be strong and y'all are it's fate so even though it's a lunar eclipse where you let go i feel like it's just directed you and it may not be what brings you the gift but you have the other planets ready to bring you the gift because you've let go does that make sense so i feel like as you let go you get the gift as you have the epiphany you get the gift as you change your mindset, you get the gift. Does that make sense? And that will be happening over the next six months. For you guys, it's probably already started. And it'll probably be mainly for four months. But you can still have it at six months. So I love you, love you, love you. I will see you guys in 16 hours. <laughs> Bye, beautiful ladies. I'll see you later.